Uh, we are here to welcome some new members to the Durham County Sheriff's Office. Our canines. <clears throat> so as they're coming in, I'm going to say the mission of the Durham County Sheriff's Canine Unit is to provide additional specialized response to crime detection, prevention, and if needed, apprehension. Today I am honored to welcome five brand new members joining three others to take the oath of honor, duty, and service. Each canine you see here and their handlers have all undergone eight weeks of high intensity training at a minimum of 40 hours per week. All canine handlers train daily and the team trains approximately 16 hours a month. This unit is trained in narcotics, explosive detection, along with evidence searches. The new K-9 assignments include four to patrol, two to our detention center, one to anti-crime and narcotics unit, and one to courts. All right, repeat after me. Ah. <laughs> right. Your name. <laughs> Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the state of North Carolina, United States Constitution, not inconsistent with the commands of my handler and the Constitution laws of this state, discharge my duties as a canine officer with the Durham County Sheriff's Office. So help me God. Alright. <laughs> I do solemnly and sincerely swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will faithful and faithfully and bear allegiance, wait your turn, to the United to North Carolina and the constitutional powers and authorities, which are or may be established for the government thereof, and that I will endeavor to support and maintain and defend the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of my knowledge, abilities, and the commands of my handler. So help me God. It's a little boring. <laughs> Thank you. And I. That's your name. <laughs> do something swear and affirm that I will be alert and vigilant to enforce criminal laws of the state and that I will not be influenced in any manner on account of treats or belly rubbing, <laughs> that I will faithfully and impartially execute, execute the duties of my office as a canine according to the best of my skills, abilities, and judgment, and the commands of my handler. So help me God. One more. Thank you. <laughs> Corporal Pops, canine Ronnie. Belgian Malawar. I've always loved working with the dogs and wanted to be part of the canine handler process and uh, get approved for it. And luckily this year in July, I was. Um, like I said, I love working with the animals. I love what they can do. Um, and it's always got to partner with you. Uh, we trained on apprehension. We trained on tracking. We trained on article searches. And our, uh, we trained on all types of drugs out there. They're a very um, useful asset that you need in this type of line of work for the drug part of it, for the apprehension part of it, um, finding missing people, article searches that we could not see at times. The dog's nose are 10,000 times stronger than ours and can locate items. He gives me a passive alert. He'll either stare at it or he'll have a stare and a sit at the same time. And that's when I reward him. And how do you reward him? I'll give him his toy. Um, but when he's not playing, he's working. He gets in the drive mode and he really likes to please me and himself.
POPAT stands for Police Officers Physical Abilities Test. So during the academy, we run the POPAT a total of three times. The first two times are for practice and to see where the cadets are. The third time is for state certification. So the state says that in order to certify, you have to pass the POPAT in a certain amount of time. So the POPAT is divided up into two parts. For part one, they have a, a maximum of six minutes to run it. Uh, for part two, it's three minutes. Uh, so to begin the POPAT, the cadet starts off seated in a chair. I advise, ask them if they're ready. When they advise me that they are, I give them the signal to go. They leave the chair and they run a distance of 40 feet around a cone, come back to the chair, and they do that two times. Uh, once they have completed that, they go through a set of obstacles. The first optical, obstacle is a four foot broad jump that they have to clear the lines. They next uh, negotiate a four foot tall fence that they go over. After that, they go through a low crawl and they go around another cone. The, the obstacle course part is 60 feet long from start to finish. Once they go around that cone, they come to do what we call a bag roll. A bag roll is a 100 pound MMA style dummy. They straddle the dummy on the mat. They roll once to their right, once back to their left. That constitutes one roll. They have to complete three of these. From that point, they move on to the push-up section. They have to complete 20 military style push-ups um, at that point with their chin touching a four inch block each time. Once they've completed that set of 20 push-ups, they come back to the roll drill again, complete three more sets of roll drill. They leave there, they go back through the obstacles, the broad jump, the fence, the low crawl, and around the cone. From that point, they proceed down to a step box and they complete 30 steps. They go back to the roll drill again, complete three more bag rolls. They do another set of 20 push-ups and then they do three more roll drills again to complete their time. So for part two of the POPAT, they start off at a, at a point, at a line, at a cone. They run 50 feet down to another cone and back, and they do that two times. Their second time down, they go to the step box and they complete 30 steps. Then they run the 50 foot uh, section again, two more times. From there, they proceed to a 175 pound dummy that they are required to drag 25 feet and then turn around and drag it 25 feet back. And at that point, their time stops. They have three minutes to complete part two of the test. So the best way to train to successfully complete the POPAT is to do a lot of running, uh, get yourself out of breath, so run short distances but fast, and then stop and do as many push-ups as you can and repeat that process over and over again. I found that that is the best way to specifically train for this test. To anybody that's coming, to just prepare. Prepare themselves mentally and physically to be a part of our academy. Well, this equipment that we have in front of us today is uh, the Child ID um, kit, is what they call it. And what it does is parents will come over and they'll fill out a form with general information, first name, last name, parent's name, um, address, um, phone number, and um, gender, race, general information. And what we do is that we 
we pull it into the system and then we print out a sheet with the child's eye, uh, face picture ID on it. Also do the um, thumb verification as well. And what makes that a great resource is that hand over to the law enforcement officer the printed form that we print out to them t for them today. And what they do, they take that, give that to them, and that gives us a little head start on trying to see if we can locate the child for them. Um, once I print out the form for them and I go to the next one, it's automatically removed. It doesn't store it into our system. It doesn't go to a database or anything of that. Um, it just is totally removed. The only thing I recommend them to do is to store it in a safe place, a place that they could get to in case of an emergency. So that's nothing more that they're going to need to do once they've received a, um, the printed form. It, it just doesn't just work for North Carolina itself, so you can use it with any other agency. Just hand off the information to them and then they'll be able to work off that information on the uh, paper. Because stuff change, phone numbers change. Um, yes, it's always good for them to update. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We hey! What are you doing? It's not even Thanksgiving. It's Christmas in Walmart. Don't worry, I got you a hat too. Hey guys, Mel and Coda here. And we're here with your pet safety announcements for the holidays. So today we're gonna to talk to you about your pets and bites. We're gonna to talk to you about some Thanksgiving tips. Obviously, we're going to talk to you about some Christmas tips, and we're going to talk to you about cold weather tips. So, to start off, holidays normally bring a lot of foot traffic, normally brings a lot of visitors, a lot of people that your pets may not be super familiar with. Like Santa? I know him. Like Santa. So, because of that, sometimes your pets may act out, they may feel scared, and they may bite somebody. In order to prevent that from happening, we want you to make sure that your pet feels like it has a safe place to go to when you have visitors in your house. That can be a different room, it can be a crate, it can be the garage if it has to be, but just make sure that your pet feels like it has somewhere safe to go. Well, that means Thanksgiving is coming. Turkey, ham, pies, corn, more pies. I'm so hungry right now. So with Thanksgiving, sometimes we want to share those festivities with our pets. So while we're enjoying all those foods, we want you to remember that some of those foods that we enjoy can be toxic and fatal to our pets. You might not even know, like avocados, olives, onions. So the safest thing to do is not to share your table food with your pets. If you want to share festivities with your pets, we suggest that you get pet-friendly treats. Otherwise, leave the table food on your table, especially things like the chocolate that you love so much. Make sure you keep the desserts and all of the foods that we enjoy out of your pet's reach. What about for Christmas? <gasps> I love Christmas. Well, for Christmas, what we want you to remember is that all these shiny and fun decorations that we like to put up are shiny and fun for our pets, especially cats. So after you're full on your Thanksgiving dinner and you're ready to rock around the Christmas tree, remember you should anchor your tree so that it doesn't tip over. Make sure that you should pet safe your tree stand if you have a live tree so that your pets aren't trying to drink the Christmas tree water, which could contain fertilizers and bacteria that could make your pet sick. Now, cats think that your Christmas tree is their personal playhouse. So I suggest putting things like bells at the bottom of your tree so when you know when your cat is near and you can kind of correct them and get them to go away. Remember things like tinsel and things like that that could be choking hazards to your pets. You really want to keep out of reach and we also suggest that you use artificial plants because things like mistletoe and holly are poisonous to our pets. After Christmas comes New Year's. Yes, 2020. And with New Year's comes fireworks, poppers, and sometimes gunshots. And food. And food. But let's remember that what goes up must come down. So first and foremost, let's not shoot in the air. Secondly, let's make sure that just like with the bites, your pets have a safe and contained place to stay so that if they get spooked, they won't run off. With that being said, on November 8th, Animal Services is offering another free microchip clinic. So if your pet does get scared on New Year's Eve and runs off, we can scan it for the chip and be able to return it home safely to you. That's right. Those are, that's going to be between the hours of 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. The first 50 residents get a free microchip and free vaccination. Now, 
New Year's is coming and guess what else is coming? Cold weather. So we just wanted to remind you that as the cold weather approaches, make sure that you're doing everything you can to make sure your pets are comfortable. If you have outside pets, please make sure you're giving them a warm place to go. Our ordinance requires you have a shelter and guess what? If you don't have one, we can bring one to you for free. That's right. So on those extra cold nights, please make sure that if you can't bring your pet inside, that their shelter is bedded down with warming material. And if you need help, don't forget, you can call us. And we will deliver a doghouse to you for free. Well, I guess that's all we got. 2020 is coming, but I've got to go decorate the Christmas tree. You do, do that. Wish you a Merry Christmas tree. Wish you a Merry Christmas tree. But he is our very first African-American sheriff for the county of Durham. Let's give it up for Sheriff Clarence Burkey. Sheriff Burkhead joined Durham County District Attorney Satana DeBerry at a student town hall before more than 200 students at the School of Creative Studies on Red Mill Road. The sheriff answers student questions, everything from law enforcement, the criminal justice system, and the school resource officer program. This was the second town hall at the Creative Studies School this year, and Sheriff Burkhead answered even more questions after the event. BDOT means Basic Detention Officer Training Academy. Um, this is Academy 64. It lasts approximately six weeks of regular training and then two weeks of post-academy. In the regular training, we teach the cadets how to become official detention officers. Uh, they have anything from orientation to investigative process, processing inmates, fingerprinting. Once the regular academy is complete, uh, they take a comprehensive um, state exam. Um, which consists of about 200 questions. Uh, it's four different blocks that they have to pass. Once they pass uh, those blocks, uh, they have a graduation. After graduation, we have our post academy. And in our post academy, we include uh, taser scenarios, mental health training, and uh, different things like that uh, to help them continue their process uh, in becoming uh, better detention officers. So academically, they learn how to process inmates into the facility. Uh, they learn uh, sec security and control. Uh, we also teach key and tool control where they actually learn how to um, monitor and make sure that the keys are issued out properly. Uh, we also teach investigative process, note taking and report writing. Um, that's one of my favorites um, where we teach them how to actually write reports um, on different uh, incidents that may happen inside the facility. And then with the investigative process, we actually do a whole court scenario. Uh, that includes courtroom testing. It's important for us to host our own because we want to make sure that our officers have the necessary uh, tools that they need to succeed within our facility. Uh, also, we, you know, we teach everything that goes on uh, within the detention officer field. We go by the guidelines uh, for North Carolina uh, Sheriff's Education Training and Standards, as which any agency does, but we put that special off to it uh, to make sure that our officers have everything that they need to uh, be able to function inside the facility could certainly understand a little bit more about you and again appreciate the diversity that you bring to this academy. Uh, prior experience, Marine, Marine, some Air Force and supervisors, we appreciate you all being here and some fresh out of college. So this is an opportunity for you all to learn from one another in your various backgrounds and experiences. For the last five years, uh, what we've done is we've put together a great group of collaborative partners from NC State School of Vet, uh, the NC State Zoology Club, uh, the APS of Durham, and the Public Health of Durham. 
uh, and everybody volunteers and we come out and try to get uh, as many animals vaccinated and uh, for the rabies vaccination as well as uh, giving away free microchip um, so that if their animals ever get out of their homes we can help identify them to return them into the home. Well it's for health purposes more than anything. Um, you know if, if an animal was to be uh, uh, bite somebody um, you know if they don't have that rabies vaccination um, they could under have to go a quarantine at that uh, the APS of Durham or um, you know, it's just moral health in case they get entangled with a wild animal, um, you know, and heaven forbid would contract the rabies virus, which is a deadly virus. Um, microchipping is huge for the sheriff's office. We've been pushing that for the last couple years. Um, it really helps us to, if we locate a dog in the field or a cat in the field, um, then we're able to check and see if it's got a microchip in the field. And if we can, uh, if it does have a microchip, then we can go ahead and, and contact the owner and take the animal back to the owner instead of taking it to the shelter uh, and just a quicker reunification process um, for the animals it's less stress on the animals uh, and it's it, it helps save the owners uh, some money instead of having to pay for uh, boarding fees and all that other stuff at the APS. Uh, we adopt all domestic uh, wild, domestic animals, excuse me, um, from your cats, dogs. We have um, corn snakes, um, ball pythons that we can adopt out, rats. We actually have 24 rats available for adoption right now, guinea pigs. So just come down to the shelter. We're always having specials as well. Come out to the shelter and adopt. All right, if they're looking for a free microchip, they can come by uh, our office. Usually once a month, we hold a, a free uh, microchip day. Um, and then on every Tuesday and every Thursday, Thursday, we offer a low-cost uh, rabies vaccination. Uh, it's ten dollars, uh, and you can come by our office on any Tuesday or Thursday and get your animal vaccinated that way. There are resources out there. You can always come to the APS of Durham um, or go on our website, and we can give you resources that you would need for your animals. I guess the biggest thing is, is you know, it's a great event that the sheriff's office kind of always coordinates, um, but it really wouldn't be possible without all the collaborative partners coming together. Um, we've really made some great connections in the community uh, and with some of the, the groups that we work with, such as NC State and Department of Health and the APS, and none of this would be feasible if, if everybody didn't come together to try to help make a difference for the animals.